Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Oh, it's fabulous to be back. So, as I said in my previous video, which was posted about, I don't know, I think it's about two months ago now, I said that a lot of things had happened in my personal life that pulled me away from the channel. I personally don't feel as though I'm ready to really talk about it because. I feel as though still a lot of healing and work has to be done. It does definitely interlink with, I would say, what I do on this channel, which is essentially uncovering and pulling off the lid of narcissism, people who are self centered, selfish. I essentially had my own personal run in with a malignant narcissist. One of the worst kind, if you can even put that into words. And I will, in due time, share my story. I want to do it, of course, on camera, uh, so it won't be an audio type video. I will, in fact, film a live video so that I can really convey to you guys everything that happened, what I went through, and how bad it was. Uh, I'm laughing now because I've had some time to process everything that happened in that situation and the impact that it has had on me as a person. And the reality of it is, is that encountering narcissists is an extremely serious thing. They do do lasting damage, not only to yourself, but also to those surrounding you, those who love you, family, friends, your children if you have children, your parents, of course. Everyone that you love and everything that you love can also be impacted by the narcissist, like just having a hobby, like running a YouTube channel, can be impacted by a narcissist. Narcissists seek to destroy not only everything about you, but everything that is associated with you, your loves, your passions, even the love that you naturally hold in your heart. If you are naturally very empathetic, so to speak, a narcissist is definitely going to latch onto that, your bright light, your white shining bright spiritual light. And I have to say, I I'm pretty much a buoyant, happy, Go lucky person. I don't really um, describe myself as extremely materialistic. In fact, I'm not. I would say I'm the type of person who's easily contented. As long as I have enough to make myself and those who I love happy, I don't really want for much. Narcissists hate that. They definitely hate people who have contentment because that's something that they just simply cannot have. They're like, moving, living, breathing, black whirlpools. They just absorb and absorb and absorb a bottomless pit with no bottom, so they can never be full up. So they are always attracted to empathetic, kind, loving people who give and give and give, and they just simply take. And it can exhaust you. And I can genuinely say, that's exactly what it feels like. You will not be the same person, depending on how long you stay with the narcissist. You will not be the same person that you once was at the beginning of the relationship. And you can see this with Harry and Meghan. You can see the transformation. Everything about him, everything surrounding him has been meticulously destroyed. His whole identity has been shapeshifted into completely something else. And he's made it easy for her. And he has essentially destroyed who he is. And he doesn't have much happiness left. Now, I know that was completely off topic. And I would consider it a personal rant. But it does still <laughs> interlink with the work that I do. All I can really say is that we must protect ourselves. We must stay safe. And we also must carry a heightened awareness around us and really listen to what people say to you. 
when you first meet them because you could be encountering a narcissist and it could cost you your life. So that's where I'm going to leave it uh, because, of course, I know you guys are dying to know the rest of the story, but I will put that in a later video. So essentially, this is old news, but I wanted to cover it on my channel because I felt as though it was essential for me to update the channel with everything that's happened and to put out my version of events. Harry and Meghan have been branded as the ultimate grifters of Hollywood. And of course they would be. The narcissistic duo take as much as they can and give little back. So their Spotify deal has pretty much been axed. Let me get into this online source and I will summarise with my thoughts. Spotify sacks slacker royals as Hollywood finally wisens up and gets wise. No talents Harry and Meghan have lost their cushy $15 million Spotify podcast deal after an outraged exec at the streaming service fired the money-grabbing couple and another branded them grifters. It has been revealed the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were banking on their royal status to make them superstars, but sources claim the lazy pair didn't break a sweat to earn their keep. Now their $20 million Netflix deal is also in danger for poor performance, according to spies who say the entitled couple is fishing for new suckers as they try to become internet influencers for fashion brands, a do-little job where they'd only have to pose for selfies. But no one is biting. The Spotify ouster came amid claims a producer interviewed the celebrity guests for their Archetypes podcast and Megan's voice was edited in later to imply she conducted the Gab sessions. Only 12 podcasts were produced in two and a half years. Stephen Spotify exec Bill Simmons hit the roof and publicly blasted the pampered pair bellowing. These are two effing grifters. A palace source says being branded con men or scammers is devastating to Harry and Meghan's quest for global domination and Hollywood A-list status. It puts other companies on notice the Sussexes may not be all they claim. Days after the Spotify chatter exploded, Meghan was close to a $15 million deal to become the new face of Christian Dior, with head-pecked Harry riding her coattails to promote their male fashion line, but the sweetheart deal was apparently news to the French fashion house. There is no truth to the claims, dishes the Dior insider. Their team doesn't know how this story came about. The denial sparked speculation. Harry and Meghan started the rumour hoping to finagle a mega deal, dishes the Palace Insider. Meghan wore Dior to the Queen's funeral, the Platinum Jubilee last year, her son Archie's baptism and other major events, while Harry chose a Christian Dior suit for his father's coronation in May, snipes the Insider. Perhaps Meghan decided it's easier and more lucrative to be a clothes horse than save the world, but it seems to have backfired. The bombshell grifters attack was no surprise to the palace, says the insider. Staffers called them entitled, delusional, rude, lazy, and afraid of hard work. It doesn't look like much has changed. They continue to live in a fairy tale fantasy. They thought rehashing their woe is us victim story was their road to financial freedom, but it's failed spectacularly. What do they have left? Losing a Spotify deal will cost the Sussexes a whopping $10 million, says the insider. Now they need new ways of financing their lavish luxury lifestyle, which includes a $14 million Montecito Mansion security costing $2 million a year, Meghan's colossal clothes bill, staffing and travel, including private planes. They're also spending millions on Harry's lawsuits in the British courts. He's suing the government over security when he visits and also has dragged reporters into court. Over claims journalists hacked phones, but admitted on the witness stand he has no concrete proof. The Sussexes must be frantically fishing for new suckers to keep them afloat, says the palace source. Megan may be forced to revive her lifestyle blog, The Tick, which she shut down in 2017 after she hooked Harry. How humiliating to fall from Royal Duchess to desperate internet influencer. Let me just pause there. 
there's nothing desperate about being an internet influencer because it is a skill in itself. I run an Instagram blog. I've taken a back seat from it. It takes a lot of time, effort and energy to build a profile. So there's nothing desperate about it. The reality of it is, is that Meghan Markle just doesn't have the stamina to sustain anything. And that's what it is. She could be extremely successful if she went back onto the TIG. But does she have the backbone, the drive, the ambition? Does she have it anymore? Someone who has been content with shouting demands and pouting and relying on her husband to give her everything for the last three to four years and has pretty much turned into a sport bratty princess probably doesn't have that type of elbow grease um, that she would need to muster up in order to climb that internet influencer pole. Influencers work extremely hard at what they do. So that's what I'm going to say there. Of course, Megan will expect to become a super influencer rivaling actress Gwyneth Paltrow, whose Goop lifestyle brand is a $200 million business, and the Kardashians with their billion dollar empire. But you need to work hard, very, very hard to achieve that. And so far, Megan and Harry seem to have a severe allergy to work. Taking selfies while wearing beautiful clothes beats working for a living, but as the Sussex's popularity plummets, no one seems to be biting, and Hollywood seems to be catching on. In a shocking blast, Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne, Nepo Baby, Kelly dissed the Duke for whining and whinging and complaining, calling Harry an F twat for his endless woe is me antics. It seems Hollywood has gotten wise to what the Sussexes are. Huffs, a palace source. Frankly, we all know it's about time. And there you have it. They took the words right out of my mouth. It takes a lot of work to build a brand. People don't like the Kardashians necessarily. They have a Marmite relationship with them. They, you can either love them or hate them. And even Gwyneth Paltrow has come under fire for her Goop brand from time to time. But it still takes a lot of work, effort, um, grit and determination. The Sussexes have proven themselves lazy and entitled. That's all I can really say, guys. So... That's to summarize this video and I'll be back with another one. Take care guys.